Today, you will discover some concepts in enumeration, which are username enumeration, directory brute forcing, and web crawling. Last time, we had an introduction to the basics of enumeration using Nmap. Here is that video in the info card if you haven't seen it. Without further ado, let's get started with our first topic, which is user account enumeration. The example that I found most suitable to explain this concept is a WordPress website. So, WordPress websites often provide feedback when a user attempts to log in, revealing information about the validity of entered usernames and passwords. This information can be leveraged by us to enumerate valid usernames, a process known as user enumeration. When you enter an incorrect username on a WordPress login page and the website responds with unknown username, it indicates that the username you entered is not valid. But if you enter a correct username and provide an incorrect password, and the website responds with, password for the username is incorrect. This confirms the existence of the entered username. This feedback becomes a valuable piece of information for us to compile a list of valid usernames. With that in mind, we can use a tool that can check many users per second and then give us back the result. I am going to show you one of my favorite tools of all time, Burp Suite. Don't worry too much about what Burp Suite is, you just have to know that we are going to use it to intercept and resend HTTP requests. And the request that's the most important to us in this case is the post request that performs the login. Remember when I taught you post and get requests in the first two videos? And I told you that login credentials are mostly sent through post requests. We now are finally going to use that knowledge. We are going to find our post request and send it to our Burp Suite intruder. Intruder is a functionality of Burp Suite that will allow us to send the same request over and over with a different parameter each time. In our case, the parameter that we want to update in each request is the username. Because as explained before, we are trying to see how the server reacts when it gets different usernames. And then we go to the payload tab. Basically here we choose a list of usernames that we want to test. It can be any list really, or you can even write it by hand. The goal here is to have usernames that you think might have a chance of being a valid username on the application. In my case, I got the username list from a file. After that, we hit run and wait for the results. When looking at the results, typically, we should look for the existence of the keywords unknown username or password for the username is incorrect to have a clear understanding if the username was valid or not. But just to make it simple, we will look at the response length. That will help us determine if we have valid usernames. These couple of requests all have the same length, which is this value. Now, when we check the body, we see that it has the unknown username message. So we know that all the usernames that have this length in their HTTP response are not valid usernames. The following length that we have is just slightly different, but it's going to show us the same results. When we go to the body and look for the text that will indicate if the username is valid, we see it's still unknown username. So this length also indicates that these usernames are not valid. The final length that we have is this. And when we check the body as usual, we see that the user is indeed valid. So any response with this exact length is an indication for us that that specific username is valid. In our case, we have the users admin, guest, and test whom are our valid users. And yes, before anyone says it, I am aware that the test username has a slightly different response length, but I assure you that inside the body, it says password for the username test is incorrect. The user enumeration technique should give you better visibility on the usernames and can allow you to find some of the user's passwords with a brute force attack. Now let's move on to something else, which is directory brute forcing or the process of finding hidden files on web applications. So what actually are hidden files? Hidden files on websites are files and directories that are not immediately visible or accessible through regular navigation. They are intentionally concealed to secure sensitive information, configurations, or sometimes unintentionally overlooked during the development process. These files can include configuration files, backups, and other crucial data that might not be meant for public access. With that being said, why are they important to us? Finding hidden files is essential for various reasons. 
Firstly, it can reveal vulnerabilities or misconfigurations in the website's security, potentially exposing sensitive information to unauthorized users. Secondly, developers may leave debugging or backup files inadvertently accessible, posing a security risk. Now, how do we look for these hidden files? We can do that using many tools. One of the most popular is Derb. Derb, short for Directory Buster, is a tool designed to discover hidden directories and files within a web application. Here's an example. We have this website in front of us that we want to enumerate. Its address is localhost port 31337. So we go to our terminal and we simply write derb followed by the URL and let derb do the work. Derb will perform a dictionary-based brute force attack, attempting to find hidden directories and files. And then it will display a list of discovered paths along with the HTTP status codes for each path. In these results, you will stumble upon some interesting files, sometimes maybe hidden admin panels, sometimes backup files, maybe a forgotten passwords.txt file. You get the idea. Fun fact, I once did a pen test for a client and I found a forgotten API endpoint when I was trying to find hidden directories. And using that API, I was able to communicate freely with the database without needing any authentication whatsoever. One final thing before we move on, see this info.php file that we found using Derb? Keep it in mind because we are going to talk about it again later on. The final concept that I want to showcase to you is the concept of crawling websites. So what is web crawling? Web crawling is the automated process of systematically browsing and collecting information from websites. It involves navigating through web pages, extracting data, and following links to other pages. Search engines use web crawling to index content, and various tools and frameworks are available for both legitimate and malicious purposes. Now, what's the difference between directory brute forcing that we saw earlier and web crawling? Well, directory brute forcing is a more targeted approach where tools attempt to discover by systematically trying different names. It's often used in to find potential entry points or sensitive information. Web crawling, on the other hand, involves systematically exploring web pages, following links, and collecting information. It's basically just trying to automate the task of clicking on each link visible on the website. So it's generally more focused on data extraction and indexing. Now let's talk about tools. For web crawling, we can use Katana, it's a command line tool that can be installed and used on Linux. We can start by this simple command. This command initiates Katana to crawl the specified URL without any additional parameters. However, the results might be limited without custom configurations. As you can see, we get some results, but it's not optimal. Basically, we were able to get the pages that can be accessed without any credentials. So how can we improve our results? We can add an authentication HTTP header or a cookie header. So we go back to Burp Suite. We copy the cookie that we will use. Then we go back to our terminal. Now we need to see how we can add a new header in Katana. So we just print the Katana help information and we grep the headers to see what's the command. Turns out it's the capital H parameter. So now we include a new custom header, which is the cookie, and run Katana again. As you can see, we have much better results this time around. However, the info.php file that we found earlier is not present among the discovered files. That's because that file can't be discovered by crawling the links, but needs to be accessed directly. And that, my friend, is the difference between web crawling and directory brute forcing. Since you watched this video till the end, you will probably like my other web ethical hacking videos as well, so click here to learn something new. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to keep learning. And as always, happy hacking!